Today we have the 2020 Toyota Avalon TRD and this is the meanest Avalon with the most attitude that you have ever seen. Today I'm going to show you exactly what makes this Avalon TRD special. We're going to look at everything on the outside details, interior, and we're going to go for a test drive and see if it's worth a look as an everyday sports sedan. Now if you want to skip around from part to part, I have timestamps in the description below so you can just go directly to where you want. I do have a review of the Avalon Touring and the Avalon XSE Hybrid if you want to see all the details on those. But this one's going to be all about this TRD. Let's get started. Now to start things off under the hood, when you look at this aggressive looking Avalon and the fact that it's a TRD, you would think it gets a little bit more power, right? No, it doesn't, unfortunately. That's one of the biggest disappointments to me, but I still really love this engine. It's Toyota's port and direct injected 3.5 liter V6 with 301 horsepower and 267 pound-feet of torque. Paired with the eight-speed automatic with paddle shifters, there is no manual transmission option. This engine likes to rev, and we will take it out for a test drive up to 6,600 RPMs is where you get that peak horsepower, and it sounds pretty good. It would also be nice to see all-wheel drive in this 2020 model. Maybe they'll give that to the 2021 models like they've given the Avalon all-wheel drive, but otherwise, miles per gallon is 22 in the city, 31 on the highway, and 25 combined. The exhaust sounds pretty good. I'll give you a listen to that before we go on the test drive. Now as you take a look at the details of the exterior and the suspension components, that's where this Avalon TRD sets itself apart from the other Avalons. This TRD technically slots itself about midway through Toyota's Avalon lineup, but it's based off of the XSE trim with these TRD upgrades, and it's honestly about the same price as the Touring and the Limited models. So starting right up front, you can still get LED headlights and LED daytime running lights. They're not as good or as cool as the Touring or the Limited lights though. Those were pretty awesome with the dynamic signals. You got the same big piano black mesh grille as the others. The TRD piano black front splitter to give this a very aggressive looking front end and even air curtains on each side to top it off. And paired with this supersonic red paint and the several black accents, it's very vibrant and it looks so aggressive. This red paint looks great on this Avalon. I really like the way that this Avalon looks, especially with the body kit that we have here. Even 19 inch TRD matte black wheels that look pretty awesome as well. Black wheels are a little bit polarizing, but I think it looks great with all the black accents on here and you even get larger front brakes with dual piston red brake calipers. So the braking performance is upgraded over the regular Avalon. Even piano black mirrors and window trim and a TRD black side skirt to add to the body kit look. And dimensionally, the Avalon is kind of a long car at 196 inches, but they actually lowered the car almost about a half an inch for a lower center of gravity, and you can definitely tell when you're driving this. Plus, you get the TRD tuned front and rear suspension. The underbody braces are thicker, which are going to give you increased roll stiffness in the front and the back, better planted cornering and handling performance, and Toyota even says that it's track ready. We will test drive in a little bit. And then coming around to the back, you've got the piano black spoiler, although it's not as big and polarizing as the Camry spoiler. You also get T LED headlights, a TRD badge, and the TRD catback exhaust with the diffuser and red pinstriping on there. Obviously, the things I just talked about, the exterior details, the suspension components are what set it apart compared to the other Avalons, but you still get Toyota Safety Sense with all the driver assist features like the lane keeping system, forward collision, uh, braking, the radar cruise control, all that stuff, standard. Now as we get to the cargo area, if you're considering the Avalon, you probably are expecting some cargo space, some passenger space, some practicality out of this, but still some fun. And you've got a touch pad right here to pop that trunk open, and then you get just over 16 cubic feet, which is nice and spacious. Even a TRD branded mat back here, uh, cargo net, the back seats can 60-40 split fold, and there's even a spare tire underneath. So overall, you're covered with cargo space back here. The front seats of the Avalon are comfortable, and they have their own unique treatment with red stitching, the TRD emblem on the headrest, some red stripe down the back, and some ultra suede material paired with this soft tech synthetic leather. The seats have a decent amount of bolstering around the sides and your thighs, although they are not extra bolstered in comparison to other models, which would be a little bit cool, but it's still comfortable and functional seat. I'm 5'9", I've got good room, I've got pretty good room for my knees, I've got good headroom, uh, even though I don't have the seat all the way down or all the way up. My only complaint with the seats is that the headrest is a little bit intrusive. So 
I complained about this in my other Avalon reviews, just something to keep in mind. It's not terrible, but I would move it back just a little if I could. These are eight-way power adjustable seats, including lumbar support. You get them heated, but if you want the ventilation or memory settings, then you'd have to move up in trim level for that. And the steering wheel gives you a nice range of motion with some manual adjustments. You're good to go with that. Now starting things off on the inside, you've got Toyota's smart key system. You can do remote start on here if you press the lock button three times and hold it. And that gives you push button start, foot on the brake. You kind of get a nice little rumble right off the bat. Now I'm just going to give you a very quick run through because I have shown you the Avalon before, but you've got a soft armrest, although it is a small armrest. This whole upper panel on the door is also a softish material, which is nice to see. All automatic one touch windows, decent storage bin. My bottle does fit, although it is a little bit tight. The steering wheel remains the same as Toyota's newest design where you get rid of the cruise control stock. All your necessary controls are on here. And then right up in front, you've got the same gauge cluster you see on the upper trims. You've got physical analog gauges as well as the uh, information display in the middle. The information display is nice and gives you a good amount of information. You got your trip computer information as well as pretty much everything you would expect. A lot of information and customizable settings. The Avalon gives you paddle shifters on the steering wheel. They are really small and plasticky, uh, but they do work. There is no head up display on the TRD model in case you were wondering. Then as you move over, as you can see, you still kind of have the exact same almost, I don't even know what to call this kind of design. And then you've got that running across the trim piece and that red stitching. So you definitely have some unique characteristics on here. Not to mention you have the red stitching on the inside of the entire steering wheel. So the Avalon still gives you the nine inch touchscreen right here. I like how you actually do have the physical buttons on the sides without them being large and obnoxious. I'm not gonna go through this cause I have before, but you can have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. We even have the JBL premium sound system, which is an option on the TRD, 14 speaker, 1200 watt, and it does sound really good. You can customize things on here. You can see your map. You can even change the colors around uh, your home screen, all of that good stuff. Uh, you do not get the bird's eye view camera. That is an option on the other trims, but not on here. You just get your standard wide view and normal view backup camera. As we go down below, we've got our climate control buttons. You have dual zone climate control for you and your passenger. We've got three tier heated seats right over here as well. And then below here, you've kind of got a soft little storage pad. I don't like these big braces. Um, so like your shifter and your bottle, if you have anything there, you don't really have a lot of room to get in here, but you can move this out of the way and that exposes wireless charging or an extra little storage cubby, almost like a hidden cubby. We have this TRD branded shifter as well. It's not the gated pattern and it moves down to D. You can move it over to S for sport mode and manually shift there. Got the red stitching. And then you have your drive mode. You've got Eco, Normal, Sport. Sport actually does make the steering a little heavier, which is nice. Brake hold, electronic parking brake, and then your two cup holders. This works just fine. And then you kind of have this squared off one, uh, which works well for a lot of different things too. I really like this whole center console. It comes all the way back. It's almost like a little cockpit cocoon type area here as well. This is nice and soft. It's really long, so you can have your elbow on there and the steering wheel. Move this out of the way. You've got three USB ports, one for your Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, two fast chargers. Then you have this removable tray and a nice size storage bin. That also has an auxiliary port as well. And then one more thing, one more charging port is a 12 volt right above the wireless charging. You still get an automatic dimming rear view mirror with three garage controls. No sunglass holder up there, which is a little bit surprising. And then you've got just a standard size moonroof. As you hop into the back seat of the Avalon, this is where you're gonna get the biggest improvement over the Camry in terms of space. You still get the TRD floor mats, you've got red TRD seat belts as well, and overall it is comfortable and spacious for someone my size. As you can see, I fit in here just fine, good leg room, got enough headroom, and you still get AC vents with a couple fast charging USB ports, and you got this center armrest with cup holders and a little storage bin. So you don't lose any practicality or space just because you have the TRD version.
All right, y'all, we are off on the test drive of this 2020 Avalon TRD. What do you think of that exhaust? I think it sounds pretty good, especially for an Avalon. The Touring model's exhaust also sounds pretty good. Now in this test drive, I will go through the drive modes. I'm gonna tell you what it's like to live with, the ride comfort, handling, acceleration, all that good stuff, even noise, vibration, harshness, and even some of how it compares to the regular Avalon. So right off the bat, we are in normal mode, and it still has a nice sound, even on just daily driving. And the Avalon does, this Avalon, and I think the Touring does have uh, an intake sound generator, which basically amplifies engine sound. Um, it's actually not quite as much as the Touring, or at least the, the Touring ha does it a little differently. I think there's an extra component to it, uh, sound enhancement, but there's definitely still some sound in the cabin here. Now, one of the common complaints that I've seen with the Camry TRD is that the ride comfort is terrible and it's really stiff. I haven't driven that, but even in this Avalon, I mean, shoot, it is still a comfortable ride. Like, I mean, I wasn't expecting it to be as plush as the Limited or the non-sporty models, and of course it's not gonna be, but this is still comfortable. This is still a, a good daily driver type of comfortable. Um, obviously, it is a little stiffer, the car sits lower, but I really don't have complaints with the ride comfort. And the car itself is nice and quiet, and I'll talk about that a little bit more a little bit later. Now right here, I'm gonna kinda get on the brakes. And one thing unique to this Avalon, the TRD, is that the brake tuning is different to have a better responsive feel compared to the regular Avalon brakes. The brakes on this one are also larger. Normal mode again, let me go ahead and just actually get on it. Such a refined sound. It's, it's it's a really quick shifting transmission, high revving engine too, and it's a it's honestly a joy to drive. Now, if you want to see an extended test drive where I really kind of push this thing a little more and it's more about the driving dynamics, I have a full video on just a point of view test drive. In normal mode, the steering feel is about average. It's good. If you go ahead and put it in sport mode, that does stiffen it up a little bit. It's not a real sporty feel, but it is good. I'll definitely take it. So sport mode kicks the RPMs up, gives you more aggressive driving. Partial down. And it's pretty quick to go. Now, if I go ahead and get on it. It is quick. This 3.5 liter V6 gets up and goes handling in this Avalon. Aside from the steering feel, this car feels planted. It's lower than the regular Avalon. You've got less body lean. You've got stiffer suspension, stiffer body structure, and you can feel it. This car is fun. It's responsive. It's, it's not going to blow you away. Like It's not like performance car, but I got to say it is a joy to drive. I do wish that it had all-wheel drive. You can definitely get some torque steer out of here. But gosh, that is nice and refined. I really, really like the sound. It's not overwhelming. And when you get off of it, you can hear just a faint little bit of exhaust back there without it being annoying. And if you're curious, this does have like I said earlier, it's got the adaptive cruise control, it's got the lane keeping system, the forward collision braking, uh, ours even has a blind spot monitor, rear cross traffic alert. So you've got a lot of the safety tech too that you see in the normal Avalon, but you've got a more fun stance and driving experience. Now I just put it back in normal mode. We'll get back in sport mode and try out those paddle shifters too in a little bit. But as I get onto a rougher textured road, one difference between this and the regular Avalon is the noise on a rougher surface. And that's probably because of this extra stiffness in the suspension, uh, possibly even that we're a little lower to the ground. Um, it is still fairly quiet. On this surface, it's not the most quiet, but once you get on like an interstate concrete, highway speeds, 
you still are quiet. It was just barely louder than my regular Avalon Touring on the interstate, but noticeably louder on this surface. You still get laminated glass over here, so you can still have a comfortable, quiet experience, even though the TRD will be a little bit louder. The good news though is that I have not had any rattles or real vibration or anything like that, even with the stiffer suspension. Put it back in sport mode. Traction control is on. That traction control, I should have switched that. That just killed our <laughs> our takeoff. But can you hear the transmission and the engine on this car? It sounds great. It really does. It sounds refined, especially for a family sedan like this. Now to use the paddles, you can just push on the paddles. And they are fairly responsive. They're not sports car quick, but you can have a little bit of fun with them. I honestly haven't because sport mode does a good enough job. If I just get on it a little bit again. That was not floored. I mean, that was just partial throttle. The sport mode is pretty aggressive, which is, which is nice and good to see on this type of car. But I would say the biggest takeaway to this Avalon versus the others is the handling. It's lower, it's stiffer. It just has that fun factor. And I don't really even have good corners to take to carve, but I mean, this car, it handles well. It holds its own. Alright, I hope you have enjoyed this drive. And the brakes do a nice job. It's nice to see the larger brakes, the different tuning that you get with it, so it's not over boosted. It feels good. Now, in terms of daily driving, I have thoroughly enjoyed driving this every day. It's great on a daily basis. It's still practical and spacious and comfortable like a larger sedan. You've got good ergonomics here. You've got a really nice sounding JBL system whenever you don't want to listen to that exhaust. And it just works. It's just if you want the extra flavor, the extra attitude with your sedan, the Avalon is great. So to wrap things up on this 2020 Avalon TRD, it is still a fun car to drive. You've got that really refined V6. It's got this mean look with some attitude. This Avalon is definitely setting itself apart from the rest of the Avalons. Now, honestly, I'm a little disappointed that they didn't at least give you a little bit of a power bump or offer the all wheel drive, at least not in 2020. But personally, after driving that touring model that has a lot of the qualities of this one and some of the more luxury features, I would probably go for that or maybe even the Limited because those are both going to be around the same price as this one. But if you want an Avalon that looks mean, a car with this kind of a presence that actually still handles really well and drives pretty nice, you can't go wrong with this TRD. Again, if you want to see an Avalon XSE Hybrid or the Touring model, I have full reviews of those in the description below. Thank you all so much for watching. Leave your comments. Let me know what you think. Subscribe for weekly reviews and check out some of these other videos below. Have a great rest of your day.